Hey everybody, it's Jeff. Welcome to another episode of Stay Rad Wine Blog TV. Just got back from Paso Robles uh, this morning. Yesterday, uh, Kara and I were down there celebrating our second wedding anniversary. We had a blast and uh, I'm looking forward to showing you some of the places that we went to and some of the wines that we tried there. Um, but here we are. Our anniversary was yesterday, but um, we figured why and the fun. Uh, we got back tonight and uh, we had a nice little dinner and we thought we'd uh, go into the wine cellar and, and open up, you know, a, a, a bigger wine, um, one that I usually, you know, wouldn't bring out. Um, I, I noticed that I had this bottle of uh, the Rodney Strong Symmetry. This is their uh, Meritage, their Bordeaux-style blend. Uh, this is the 2005, so we've been sitting on it for, for about like three and a half years. Um, it's 73% Cabernet Sauvignon, 15% Merlot, 5% Cabernet Franc, 4% Petit Verdot, and 3% Malbec. Um, and I was just looking, you know, at various tasting notes and they were suggesting, you know, here in the year 2012, if you've still got a bottle, you, you may as well open it now. Um, and so I, I figured why not? You know, originally when we got this, it was probably around $50 um, today if you wanted to buy it on their website, it's 73 um, so, you know, it's, it's gained a little value because there aren't as many left and, and it's got a little bit of age on it and it, it should be some good stuff. So I'm looking forward to, uh, tasting this and sharing it with Kara and sharing my notes with you. Um, this has been, uh, sitting in the decanter for about, about two hours, a little bit more than that. And the color, um... It's nice. It's kind of like a richer, darker, deeper um, ruby color. There is a little bit of staining on the glass. I mean, the color is really nice. Um, it, it is showing a little bit of age, you know, near the rim. Um, it is going from like this uh, purplish ruby to more of like a, a browner um, type of type of red color. It, it looks kind of nice. Um, the cork, when I pulled it out a couple hours ago, it looked a lot more gnarly um, on this end right here, but it has kind of dried off. Um, so it's not as awesome, but I'll, I'll show you a cool picture of what it looked like uh, down below. Just take a look. Um, let's stick my nose in this. So I'm getting like some really good um, like tobacco and mint and like some forest floor. Some really good, you know, herby type of notes. And, and really it is kind of making me think about the forest or the woods in general. Um, I grew up in the Santa Cruz mountains and uh, in a lot of folks' backyards, there would be just wild blackberries um, growing around. And my friends and I would go and, and just kind of pick blackberries while we were hanging out. Um, and this is having a little bit of that blackberry on the nose, like that darker, riper, um, just, just juicy blackberry. It is predominantly the uh, herbs that are jumping out at me, but I mean the fruit is really nice. I mean this is a this is an interesting one. This is a uh, this is a smooth character right here. If you want to lay down. Um, that's $72, $73 to get this wine right now. I would not be mad at you. Um, you know, it's quite a bit of money to throw down on a bottle that you're going to open up right now. But I mean, this really does <clears throat> taste like it's at its peak as far as, you know, the, when wine ages, you get big fruit that starts to drop out and then those big, like, earthy, kind of tannic, notes that start to come up and right now those two different flavor profiles are, are very much in line with each other they've kind of balanced they've kind of leveled um themselves out and this is a a very it's it's a classy expensive tasting wine um it's not over the top like in your face um one-dimensional 
big California fruit, um, it really does have like this nice, uh, good acidity, this nice soft, silky kind of tannic uh, structure. Um, and, and just all around, this is some quality juice. Now, I mean, score-wise, let me dive back into this here. Gosh, and there is like, um, like some, uh, some dried plum type of fruit. Um, I guess those are prunes. Um, but it, it does have like a, a nice like condensed concentrated fruit along with, you know, just these earthy leathery type of notes. Um, and I mean, you know, at it, 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 $72 today, um, you know, I, I know that there's definitely a lot of other wines that are in, you know, the 30 $40 range that could bring a lot of these same things. They're not going to have the, the age that this does have right now. And, and when you talk about aged wines, they do just taste a little bit um, different. It is a different animal. Um, would I today throw down $70 plus dollars, um, for this wine? Probably not. Um, I'm, I'm ranking it like in the 91 point range, which is an excellent wine. It's a great wine and you are going to love this. Um, but I think what would be a lot more fun, uh, is what Kara and I did three and a half years ago, right? We went and visited this winery and, and it was $50 and we threw it down then and, and over the course of three and a half years, you forget about it, you know? Do I feel upset? Like I just paid a, a buttload of money for a bottle of wine right now? Not really because I don't even remember paying for it. In fact, it's possible I didn't. It's possible. Um, so, you know, over the course of years, it's, it's essentially doesn't really cost you anything um, if you are going to drink it down the line um, in in a time frame that that it suggested and if you are storing it the right way so it doesn't get ruined over the course of those years um, it is kind of fun uh, to to throw down some bucks and and wait a while uh, again a, a solid wine and and at 91 points this is a, a delicious wine uh but i definitely think it'd be fun for you guys to maybe see what the the current vintage of the cemetery is like and think to yourself maybe is there some ageability and maybe save yourself a little bit of dough and and wait a couple years if you can um this is this is very nice and and kara's gonna be very happy when she starts drinking this too i guess my question for you is Three and a half years, I mean, granted, I'm, I'm fairly new to the wine game. Um, three and a half years ain't much. I mean, I've had wines that were from the 1970s before. Um, but I'm wondering, what's the longest that you've ever waited to open up a bottle of wine? And have you ever waited too long? That's what I wanted to know from you. Uh, so go ahead and leave a comment, and it's it's good to talk to you guys. And and. Thank you so much for watching and I really do appreciate it. And I love comments. I live on comments. Leave a comment. Bye everybody. Stay rad.